What is going on, y'all? And welcome back to the A-Ray Show. I hope you guys had a nice Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and enjoyed the long weekend. You know, it's crazy to think that we're finally here the last month of 2020. After this crazy and hectic year, we're finally here in December. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the top three dividend stocks that I'm going to be investing in heavily in the month of December. So with that, let's get right into it. All right, so let's jump right into that first stock. And that first stock is going to be in my consumer sector. And you guys probably noticed that I've sold some stocks and added some stocks. So I'm going to be talking about that in a future video, but that's beside the point. So let's get right into it. That first stock is none other than Target. And Target is a stock that's going to benefit from all the Black Friday sales and all the deals that are going on on top of Cyber Monday as well. And a lot of analysts are projecting that sales are going to be bigger and higher than expected. So I feel like once the numbers are out, that's going to project this, the value of Target and the stock number is going to appreciate a lot. So it's definitely a good time to accumulate and build wealth in that company, in that stock. So that's why I'm going to be accumulating as much as I can before those numbers are released. And also on top of that, they've also have a great track record. And I'll show you guys in just a second what I'm talking about. Their dividend growth is phenomenal. And they're just a company that I believe in their business model and everything they do is awesome. So let's look at the chart first and I'm not the best chart reader, but you know, we'll take a look anyway. So you can see that it's up 42% within the year, year to date, 40% and six months we're up 53%, which is awesome. It's great. But also at the same time, it can look like it's a little bit overvalued and it definitely is. If you look at the 52 week range, it's, it's at the very high end of, um, the 52 week range. So it's definitely overvalued, but it's a stock that, you know, I can see getting a lot more catalyst and just kind of projecting higher and higher. So it's not really FOMO that's that I'm feeling, but it's more like I can definitely see it going a lot higher than it is right now. So I like to establish a position and kind of grow from there. And if it drops, if it dips, then that's great. That's kind of what I'm looking for. But I'd rather be in the stock and have a position than not have one at all and wait for that potential dip that might never come. You know what I mean? So it's best to kind of establish the position. And I'm, I'm always dollar cost averaging. So if it goes down, then great. So that's the first thing on the chart. And now we're going to kind of look into the dividends. So I talked about the track record. So you can see that we've got 52 years of dividend growth, which is phenomenal. And that's what you're looking for for a long term company or a long term stock that you're going to invest in. We've got a, a decent yield of 1.51%, but as we invest more and more over time, this dividend yield is gonna grow. And you can see it's at growing at a five, uh, five year growth rate of 6.47%, which is pretty good, it's decent. That's what we're looking for. So it's definitely a stock that has a good track record that's growing at a phenomenal rate and one that I can see myself investing in for the long term. So now we're going to look at the dividend growth and we've got a 3% for this year. And because it's year 2020, I give a lot of stocks some leniency and I'm cool with that happening. You know, you can't grow it by like 10 or 20%. I'm just happy that this company in general is continuing that dividend growth. And, you know, we've kept it up for 52 years, so we're going to keep it going. And then if we're looking at the five year growth rate, 6.47%, and then we've got 14.69% for the 10 year growth rate. And this is what you're looking for for a company that's growing their dividend and you want it to continuously increase and look like this you know it's not going to be always exponential like this but you know con consistently growing that dividend is what we're looking for in a long-term company that's going to be part of our portfolio and the last thing i want to show you guys is dividend safety so you can see the payout ratio is 30 percent, which is pretty healthy anywhere between a 30 to 60 percent is considered healthy for a payout ratio and we can see it's right around the 2018 level. So Target is always going to be a nice, safe stock that you can have full faith in and believe in their business model, their financials and their dividend history and track record. So I can go on and on about the financials, the track history, dividend growth and all that for Target. But I don't want to bore you guys. It's all readily available information on Seeking Alpha or other platforms. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And with that, let's get right into this article by Forbes. So of course, Black Friday and Cyber Monday are going to be a big reason why the Target stock is going to be a big benefactor and why it's going to prop up. But this article talks about something called the Santa Claus rally, which basically at the end of the year, the market tends to prop up a little bit higher. So it says the S&P 500 about, props up about 1.3% each year because of that. So the reason why is because there's a lot of anticipation to the fourth quarter sales. And of course, Target is going to perform really well because of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So before this 1.3% happens at the last week of December, I kind of want to get in and establish a position. So 
that's kind of why I'm trying to build my wealth and try to get as many shares as possible in Target before that happens. And then before the numbers come in for Black Friday, which I anticipate are going to be amazing and better than expected, I kind of want to build my portfolio and my position in Target. So all in all, because it has a great track record and because Target is such a great company for the, my long-term portfolio, and because of the Santa Claus rally and the Black Friday sales and Cyber Monday sales, it's definitely a company that I'm going to be investing in heavily in the month of December, or at least in the beginning few weeks of December before this Santa Claus rally happens, if it does happen. And with that, let's get right into stock number two. All right, for stock number two is in my healthcare sector. And this one was honestly pretty hard to choose just because I feel like the whole healthcare sector is going to benefit in the month of November, or sorry, the month of December. And that's because of the whole presidential change and because of the vaccine being announced and the distribution coming pretty soon. So I had to narrow it down to two stocks and that was Johnson Johnson and CVS. And CVS has been doing really well and I actually loaded up on it in November. And Amazon actually also announced that they were doing a pharmacy or some something along the lines of that. So CVS had a nice little dip, so I added up a lot. But I had to choose Johnson Johnson over CVS just because Johnson Johnson has a great long-term track history. It's a great company that has a variety of products and it's just a tank, it's a beast. And right now it's kind of undervalued and I'm actually down on it. So it's a great time to load up and we'll kind of go into the track history again. So let's just quickly go over their track record. So you can see that they're at a 6.87% growth rate for 10 years and they're also at a 6% for one year. So they're pretty consistent right around that 6% growth rate, which is pretty good. That's what we're looking for. And that's one of the reasons why I really like Johnson Johnson. It's reliable. It's a pandemic proof stock. It's a stock that's always going to be around no matter what the what the world looks like and it's been growing for 50 years so it's really reliable it's got a consistent growth and it's just been growing ever since and it doesn't show any signs of regression or anything like that so that's the reason why i really like johnson johnson it's also pretty undervalued or right around where it's always been valued around this year beside this dip right here because of the pandemic but that being said it's right around that range that i bought it at so i'm just going to kind of load up before anything happens and I do think there's going to be a small push on the healthcare sector because of the presidential change and also because of the vaccine coming into play. I feel like a lot of stocks are going to benefit. A lot of healthcare stocks are going to benefit from that. And it might be like a kind of a sympathy play where every single stock in the healthcare sector gets pushed just because of the vaccine being coming from this healthcare sector. But that's just a personal opinion. So might as well load up while it's at a cheap price. So this is just another article that kind of highlights why having this new presidential change and also having a split Senate is kind of good for tech and healthcare and pharmaceutical stocks. And that's because having these split Senate makes it hard to make new laws and put new regulations on these stocks. And that's a good thing for investors because investors don't typically like when there's change and uncertainty in the markets or in the government or anything like that. So it's a good thing when there's these regulations that aren't being able to be put on these stocks because the stock market and investors like when there's no changes. So that's going to help prop up these stocks. And this is kind of an outdated article, but nonetheless, it still stands the same because these regulations aren't being put. And it's a good thing for these stocks at the long run. And Johnson Johnson, I feel like is a company that has a good track record, has stability. It has a lot of cash flow and has the ability to stand strong pandemic proof. And with a little bit of boost right here, it's a good time to buy it, especially because it's undervalued. And with that, you know, let's get right into the next stock, which is pretty interesting in my opinion. Final stock that I'm gonna be investing in heavily in the month of December is Disney. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna be saying, yo, Disney cut their dividend, they suspended it, they don't pay a dividend anymore. But yeah, that's true. But I was never really investing in them for their dividend in the first place. Like, I mean, I was, but their dividend wasn't significant enough to kind of chase that yield because their yield was pretty low anyways. But the reason why investing in Disney is because of their streaming service. And right now, I feel like that's one of their key components and it's going to be a, a big cornerstone to their company. And yeah, it's relatively new, but it's definitely going to be a big part of their company in the future. And it provides a lot of value to Disney. And you can see that. Um, when they got their streaming service announced, their stock, their value, their price jumped up quite a bit. They jumped up substantially compared to before. And on top of that, Disney's also kind of a recovery stock because they have a lot of parks that aren't really open right now or they are open at a limited capacity. But once they start opening up more because the vaccine news just came out, there's going to be a lot more people going to these parks. There's going to be so many people missing it. 
there's going to be a lot of euphoria in the market and a lot of people are going to be buying disney and i'm going to be one of those people that's going to buy it right now before that price jumps up quite a bit so going back to when they first announced their streaming service you can see there's a huge jump from like 110 dollars to like almost 135 140 dollars so that streaming service was definitely substantial gave it a huge jump and obviously because they cut their dividend and because they had to close parks and because of the pandemic, there was a huge drop off, which I wish I was investing in Disney back then. But nonetheless, I'm still happy I'm in Disney. And I feel like that if there is another lockdown, streaming services are going to be a lot more valuable. And Disney not only has Disney Plus, they have Hulu, they have ESPN Plus as well. And eventually when the vaccine comes out, that streaming service is still going to be, people are going to still be watching it and parks are going to be open and i guess it is kind of a recovery stock more than dividend stock now but it, D disney definitely has a lot of valuable assets that's going to make it a great company to invest into now and kind of build their position now and we'll kind of have to see where it goes but i definitely will be putting a lot of money into disney even though it's a small part of my portfolio so all in all yeah it's a very small part of my portfolio but i'm still going to be adding to it i'm going to be growing as much as possible i do believe that dividend will be back one day whether it's next year the year after that, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, however long. I'm not planning on selling Disney anytime soon. I'll probably keep it and hopefully be able to pass it down to future generations. But I do believe that dividend is going to be there. I'm mostly keeping it right now as a growth stock to kind of counteract a lot of my stocks that aren't growing as much. For example, it's AT&T and Coca-Cola. But yeah, I definitely see Disney growing a lot faster than these other stocks. So definitely a good stock to kind of load up right now while it's cheap it's not necessarily cheap but i do see a lot of catalysts to kind of prop up the price for example if we do go into another lockdown that streaming service will be propped up or if we get the vaccine news the stores will be open the parks will be open a lot of people will be going to disney themed places things like that so we'll have to see with disney i do believe it in the long term and it's been a great business for years and years so that's pretty much all I've got for you guys for today. I appreciate you guys for listening, all 22 of you guys, and more if anyone else is listening out there. I appreciate you guys. It's pretty tough out here, but yeah, I appreciate you guys. And please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you guys got anything valuable out of this video. I'd really appreciate that subscription or anything, even a like. I appreciate that. And yo, comment what was your favorite stock out of the three that I mentioned. And also, guys, be sure to hit up my other channel where I do NBA podcasts with a couple of my friends. The ECB cast, we're also on Spotify, Google, Apple. I'll leave all the links in the description so you guys can check it out. So yeah, with that, remember guys, everybody eats.